like always, quick look back on the, on, on the tape, um, really in all three phases, uh, opportunities, but missed opportunities at the same time. And, and, and it did uh, cost us offensively, you know, production early on, moving the ball, came up short in the red zone. And then obviously with the ball at the end of the game, opportunities there. Was proud at the line of scrimmage. I thought we did some good things, uh, making it physical in the run game. I mean, Nate Carter had a great game catching it and, and running it. But, you know, when you score 17, you have opportunity to do more. You got to do it defensively, um, physical, tackled well. I thought we did a good job against the run game outside of just the, you know, the quarterback run game hurt us a little bit. And a couple of missed, missed assignments there that, that, that caught up to us. Uh, was proud of some of the response defensively, you know, short field, tried the onside kick thing, got a three and out when we needed it late to get the ball back to have an opportunity, um, but still more more there. Special teams, not our best execution wise, not just the, you know, onside kick, we, you know, fair catch, got some bad field position. I did think we responded offensively when we did start at the five yard line, getting a, getting a score. And so just some missed opportunities and an emotional, important, important game. I think for me, it kind of crystallized uh, Saturday night and leading into it knew it was important rivalry, emotion and going, but now truly experiencing it for the first time. That thing is different. That thing is important. And uh, that's why it's so frustrating to feel like we could have done a few things better. But you know, you got to you got to move on to the next week and whatnot. But you will not forget after experiencing that sucker. I will not forget that thing. Um, but we do got to move on to uh, to a big time opponent, one of the hottest teams in the country, uh, doing it in all three phases. You look at Indiana offensively, doing some things, can score points in bunches. Defensively, you got some good players running around, a solid scheme, and you don't you know, win every game by accident. And so, one of the hottest teams in the country, and so we're going to have to reload and regroup. Excited to get back to Spartan Stadium um, for a big time environment and a, another opportunity moving forward. Questions? Yeah, uh, we're finalizing things, but that does not look good for the, the rest of the year. We don't have that final final, but it doesn't look good. And then the post-game stuff, after you had a chance to review it, is there anything that you saw and that you've heard from your staff members that you think you've done most as far as contact with the Big Ten has been with that? Um, yeah, I know Alan Howler, our athletic director, has been in contact with the Big Ten, and my understanding is they are looking into it. Um, I did... In, in ways, pleased with our players, ask those guys to make the thing physical Saturday night and play discipline in football. Um, would, would have loved to finish the thing um, at the end uh, better, I think, on both sides. Um, but yeah, I know uh, Alan's been in contact with them. Jonathan, the uh, delay a game on the first possession before the missed field goal, is that a timeout you have to call? Is that something you want Aiden to do? That's on me. No, 100% I call timeouts. Um, I will say we were the first drive the communication to the quarterback helmet was not working so we were you know operating a little differently um, I should have called timeout if we want to go you got the ball on the two yard line um, that's one I'd love to have back and with Will Johnson out were they doing anything special to take Nick out of the game or just didn't they you know had a few times so yeah coverage is going his way um, but not dramatically different uh, just because uh, I believe um, one of the corners won't play Jonathan, uh, uh, first part I wanted to ask about the Jordan Turner uh, targeting. Is that something that is reviewable by the Big Ten? Is that something that you have submitted to them? And have you heard anything on that? Oh, that's true. They, they review it. We appealed it, um, and they denied the uh, the appeal. So he'll be out for the first half. Uh, the second part it, it goes back to the the altercation on the field. I guess uh, it, it, I don't know how many angles you've watched or what things you have seen, uh, but. I couldn't, we couldn't tell if there was a player or a staff member under the pile that getting stomped. I wonder if you knew anything about that. And I, I guess it, it also looked like most of your team was back towards your sideline. And it was more, it was, seemed like a definite outnumbering over there. Yeah, I haven't thoroughly looked at, at every angle and, and all of that. It was a, a, lot of, a lot of bodies out there. My experience and then learning um, yesterday, yes, we had a, a staff member that was in the fray of it and a, a player in the fray of it, um, and that's what we're hoping they're looking into. Coach, for the second straight week, uh, run game was really effective. Um, how important is that going to be? You're going up against Indiana, another top 10 uh, rushing defense. 
Yeah, it's really important to look for some balance. Uh, I think we've made, taken a step since that bye week, the last two weeks, in the run game in particular, we've, we've taken a step. It makes things easier on your quarterback. When you have some balance like that, we've got to continue to, to keep that uh, going because we've had you know, more production, moving the ball when you, you can do both. Um, and so pleased um, with the run game effort the last two weeks. And then you said after the game, um, you felt you were prepared well for Orgy and um, you said you'd look at the tape, figure that out. What, uh, what did you notice on tape? Yeah, a couple of mishaps. And again, in the, when he's in the game, you're thinking quarterback running game. And uh, they were effective, especially late when they needed to get a couple of first downs, got that done. And so we got to you know, tighten it up. And each week's new, right? So who you're playing, uh, the schemes are going to be different. But we would love to play that a little bit better than we did last on Saturday night. If you had time to talk to your players about what happened Saturday, have you revisited that yet with them? And yeah, I guess 100. what was the messaging? Yeah, we always, uh, on Sundays, we take a deep look at, at the game, and we're always about correcting and proving. We're going to watch it, and there's some things that we want to build off of, some things we got to clean up. Uh, spoke to a little bit of the motion of the game um, in that, you know, that locker room, when I walked in after that game, this thing means something. You know, it was frustrating. And I actually told them that's a good thing. If I would have walked into the locker room and these guys are just staring at their phones or something, we'd, we'd have problems. We didn't have that. This thing was emotional, um, and that's how we want to want to be playing the game. And then two years ago, I mean, a, a comparable situation ends up with charges against MSU players. With Michigan, there hasn't been any discipline, anything announced. Do you feel like there's a, a sense of unfairness there? Uh, again, I I don't know. I wasn't, wasn't here the two years ago. I know uh, the Big Ten's looking into it. Thank you. John, I was wondering, does it help when you, I mean, obviously coming off, like you said, a very emotional game, does it help to refocus when you've got an unbeaten team, like you said, one of the hottest teams in the country coming in here? And, and it's a tr another trophy game. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I, and again, I'm pretty confident in this group. We will not forget Saturday night. I promise you that, okay? But we moving forward, and yeah, you got a big time team coming in back at home. I think these guys will be excited to play on Saturday. Jonathan, you've coached in in-state rivalry games before. What did you learn Saturday night? Uh, you know, I think you just walk into the place, and uh, there's a, a genuine dislike, um, and you could feel that from the get-go, a pregame, from the crowd to the to the place, and then sharing the tunnel, and so that, that's unique in a, in a rivalry piece to share that tunnel and be walking by, you know, by these guys uh, nonstop, and so. Uh, I can see, I think about, you know, you hear about the former players and how much this thing means. After experiencing this thing uh, one time, this thing is different. Um, and that crystallized for me on Saturday. And as a first year coach, you've actually got a staffer who was at Indiana. What in the world have they done there? And how have they gone yeah. from where they were at 8-0? Credit to them. I mean, they turned a lot of new players in their first year at Indiana. Obviously, schematically, the coach Signetti knows what he's doing, uh, putting the thing together. He's had success other places. And, and I do think they're playing with a lot of confidence. You just watch them um, from start of games and being able to finish games. These guys are playing with a lot of confidence. And, and they've had some real success. Uh, Jonathan, um, pass rush was really good to start the season, but I believe it's been four straight games without a sack. You know, against Rourke, if he were able to go, he's been one of the most productive quarterbacks in the Big Ten. How important is it going to be to get that going this week? Yeah, we want to uh, affect the passer. You know, and again, each each week, I think about the last couple of weeks, not pl playing prolific passing games, um, and so your sack count's probably going to be down when you're playing teams like that. But this, these guys can throw it. They do a nice job in the RPO game, and they're going to have a balance of mix and run and pass. But uh, we want to affect the passer, uh, especially against a good quarterback. Jonathan, do you worry about just moving on? This is a game is a harder game to move on from to get ready for an Indiana team that's obviously very good. And, and, and second, well, I'll start there. Does this game present unique challenges coming out of this game and getting and shedding it? Yeah, I think the unique is that, yeah, emotional rivalry in the middle of the year and then you're going to play the next week. Um, but we've talked about being process approached. However, Saturday turns out, we're going to look at it on Sunday and move forward, counting on this player-led team to do that. They had a players-only meeting actually discussing this topic last night. Um, and so I'm confident we'll be back to work tomorrow morning. Secondly, would Indiana had a pretty charmed schedule relative to you guys to, to start the season. Would you rather have, and, and I mean, you could argue you'd be at least 6-0 and if you'd played that schedule. Would you rather have a confidence-building schedule that creates sort of momentum and whether it's real or not, or would you rather know every 
hard truth and wart about your team like like you do? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if one way is way better than the other. You just we don't dictate the schedule, and you know, in this conference, that's how it's going to play out. So, the 18 teams, you're only going to play nine of them, you know, and so you're going to miss some opponents and and that. Uh, I look at our schedule. I do think it's been tough. We played some real teams, um, but I'm proud of our group as we continue to battle. I think we've gained confidence as the years going gone on. We can go toe to toe with just about anybody, and now we want to you know play our best football in November. Uh, excuse me, Jonathan. Um, you, you saw the we all saw their backup quarterback last week. Don't know, I guess, the situation there. How different is he from? Rourke, their main guy, and just generally offensively, what have they done to put up some of these big numbers that you've seen on, on some of these teams? Well, schem schematically, yeah, they do a nice job. I think they've got weapons in the backfield, at, at receiver. The whole line looks like they're on the same page and do, know that scheme and, and have played pretty high level. Talk about the quarterback thing. I didn't see a lot of difference in the, their efficiency, their operation. And so uh, preparing for who you're going to see, both of them operate that offense pretty well, and we're going to have to prepare for it. Jonathan, I apologize to have to ask about this after a football game, but when the scuffle broke out, there were 23 seconds left in the game. Um, their sideline poured onto the field to join the scuffle. When you're coaching a team, do you have to remind your players to not join a scuffle or leave the sideline, or do you have any thoughts about what they did and what that led to? Yeah, uh, you know, amongst the rules, the clock's still going. You leave the sideline, that's a penalty. But I do think about the previous week, we had this similar situation. We're, you know, up on Iowa, taking a knee, right, and me and Coach Friends meet. I think before even the game uh, clock went out, and so we do. We, we got to be smart uh, at the end of the game. Um, in this, in particular, one. Uh, hopefully, this is a scene that doesn't take place uh, again. Um, but the clock's still going, and yeah, we want to operate within the the rules on both sides. Did you feel like your players were taken advantage of in, in that situation, or the, was the staff member over there trying to break it up? Can you? Comment on that. I can comment to say yes. We had multiple staff and our own sideline getting over to to break it up, to protect, to to get out of there. Like I said, I am thoroughly looked at every angle and whatnot. I know the conference is going to be looking into it. We've been in touch with them, um, and that's what I got on that. Um, just as far as things you can build off of positives, the second straight week again where the the offensive line looked like they you know they did a good job in the run game. Obviously with Nate, is how much of that is focused to when you show your players what went right how much is that moving forward yeah you always point out because again yeah the score is what it is but there's plenty of snaps within the game that like i say you can build off of i think about jack carson Wentz coming in as a long snapper right shickle goes down we got to punt the ball kind of backed up and in front of 110,000, he throws a strike back there sam edwards needed to come in to be the short snapper on field goal that got operated i think but jonathan kim this is the early one that he totally is capable of making he comes back and responds he made a big kick to make that a six point game and so yeah there's plays on there that uh, you like and you want to build off some confidence um, in every game. Looking back, when you watch the tape, uh, uh, what was working with the offensive line and, and who do you feel maybe had their, their best game? It looked like Baldwin was playing really well. And how do you continue that forward momentum on the run game with, against one of the nation's best run defenses? Um, you know, I think the technique these guys continue to believe in, the mindset of making it physical showed up amongst all five guys. I think the tight ends are part of that. Um, gained a little confidence and, and even think the backfield. You look at the way Nate Carter was carrying that thing, finishing runs. Um, there's, there's a lot to like, but each week is going to be new. I do think the defenses we played really the last month are, are pretty good, so we should be building some confidence that we can, if we play our technique, play, make it physical, we can have some success in the run game. No guarantees. We're going to have to prove it again on Saturday. When a player like Jordan Turner is going to miss that first half and, and you're going to have to put him in in the second, how do you keep a guy like him fresh, ready for the, the game when he doesn't have that first half to experience and learn from? Yeah, that's not going to be easy on him, but he'll be locked in. He's one of our captains. This guy, his approach to the game. Um, and, you know, some beauty. We talked about it the other week. Our front seven, we played 17 different guys in the front seven. So, you know, Jordan Hall gets more, you know, Snaps, Wayne Matthews, Cal Holiday. We've got some guys that need to step up, and those guys will.